How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. I just picked up this cool Triceratops skeleton model kit from my local hobby store which looked like it would fit perfectly into my wild imaginary west. A few months ago I put together the imaginary T-Rex skeleton model kit and integrated it into a diorama as the centerpiece of a large wild western battle. This time around the idea is that a mercenary group has established control of the dig site and is standing guard while crews work to unearth the giant dinosaur bones. I started this build by removing the kit from the sprues and then I began assembly. Bondi makes some pretty awesome snap fit kits and these imaginary dinosaur bones are no exception. After posting my T-Rex bone video, I received many comments bringing my attention to a real life series of events known as the Bone Wars, where two fossil hunters named Edward Drinkercope and Othniel Charles Marsh, talk about some names, began a heated competition over dinosaur bones, with armed guards, sabotage, and even attempts at ruining each other's professional reputations, all of which actually happened in the late 1800s within the Wild Western era. What I thought was kind of a fun, funny, and slightly outlandish idea for an imaginary universe turned out to be far more realistic than I had originally thought. Once the dinosaur was done, I sealed the pieces together permanently using some plastic cement, and I prepped it to be embedded in the side of a cliff. This preparation included undoing a lot of the assembly that I had just finished and clipping away all of the pieces that couldn't be removed without violence. After that, it was time to build up the terrain. I broke out some pink XPS insulation foam and began making the base shape of the terrain. I used a pile of foam offcuts to form a platform that would keep the dinosaur in an upright position. Once I was happy with the way that the dinosaur sat, I glued all the foam bits together using some foam safe super glue. When all the foam bits were nice and snug, I marked out some spots where I wanted the dinosaur to sink into the backdrop just a little further and I carved those spots with a foam knife. I also used the knife to give the rock some foam texture and followed it up with a butane torch to add further variation and imperfection to the rest of the surfaces. After gloving up, it was time to make a terrain paste. I used some paper mache mix combined with plaster to create something very similar to sculpt mold After adding the water, I spread it across all the horizontal surfaces to create some realistic looking earth. I then pressed the dino bones into the wet mix and built up the area around it with more pseudo sculpt mold, hopefully giving it that proper embedded dino bone look. I then mixed up some plaster and mod podge and I watered it down and I covered all the vertical surfaces. This thinner mix will help preserve the details that I carved into the foam earlier. While the terrain was still wet, I added texture to the surface in the form of sand and flocking, which I sealed with isopropyl alcohol and watered down white glue. I then blew off all the excess and I left it overnight to dry. My friend Craftsman recently gave me some bits and model kits, which included this awesome set of French Foreign Legion figures in 1 to 70 second scale. This diorama seemed like the perfect setting to introduce these guys. Given that there is no active combat in this diorama, I picked out the figures that were in more passive poses rather than the action poses. In addition to the blue guys, I wanted to include a variety of other minis that could be working on excavating the dig site or just standing around watching the people excavate the dig site. I cleaned up the mold lines and sprue marks and glued all the figures down to some painting bases. After taking everyone outside and priming them with a zenithal highlight, it was time to begin painting. Everyone on this painting base are full-time bone hunters who do the work getting the bones out of the ground and transporting them to market. All of them came out west at some point, hoping to forge a new life for themselves, some with the railroad, some as prospectors, but one way or another they all stumbled into the lucrative business of bone hunting. They have a lot of skill as bone hunters, but only a few are equipped to fight. And that's where this second group of minis comes in. This well-trained mercenary group, whose name I can't pronounce, came over from Europe after hearing about the wealth that could be made working as private security in the Wild West, particularly in the area known as Remnant Gulch. The group has trained together for years and prepared to fight and survive in harsh environments such as this. I'm usually content with any half-decent paint job I can accomplish on these tiny figures, but I'm genuinely happy with this little group. It might be my best 1 to 70 second scale paint job yet. By this point, the base had fully dried and it was time to add some scaffolding. I cut up some strips of balsa, and began building and placing some platforms and walkways into the environment around the bones. 
I wasn't sure what a site like this was supposed to look like, so I just made it up as I went, making sure to add spots for people to stand and walk in a way that looked intentional. You may have noticed that the dinosaur is about twice the size it should be, and impossible that the bones would be holding their shape like this straight from the ground. But just remember that we are in the wild imaginary west, not the wild complete historical and scientific accuracy west. My goal with these dioramas isn't realism, the goal is fun. After all the walkways and non-dino details were on, I took the whole thing outside and I primed it, which is always very satisfying. I used a hair dryer to speed the dry time, threw on some gloves, and I began the painting process. I gave the Triceratosaurus a coat of wildwood contrast paint and began defining all the other standalone details with their own contrast paints as well. Once all the wood and other non-terrain details were painted, I splattered the rocks with various tones of washes until all the vertical surfaces had color. Then I painted the horizontal dirt surfaces with a flat acrylic light brown. When painting terrain, controlled random is the best oxymoron to keep in mind. After another quick breeze with the hair dryer, I added some sandy pigment powder followed by a sandy coat from the airbrush. These steps help tie everything together as a unified piece. I brought back some contrast to the rocks with a final wash and it was time to glue all the little figures in place. I still haven't replenished my black 3.0 supply, so I painted the sides of the diorama with plain black, and then I finished the diorama with some little plant life. After that, I called it good. Along with the glamour shots from this build, here's the rest of the collection as well, aside from the town. It's fun for me to look back and see this little universe taking shape, and I'm very excited for where it's going. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.